What will the Denver Nuggets do at the trade deadline this year? I'm Ryan Blackburn. He's Swipa. We are excited to bring a little Denver Nuggets trade deadline preview to you. Uh, Swipa, we've been very fortunate to cover a great Denver Nuggets team where the starting lineup has been clicking. The bench is starting to find its way a little bit. I'm curious as to what your initial impressions are of the trade deadline this year for Denver and, and what they should be thinking about. Yeah, I mean, the most important positions for Denver are going to be the backup point guard position, the power forward position backup, and then the center position. And I think probably in that order, given that backup point guard is secured with Reggie, but they might want a little bit more of a defensive-minded guard to play next to Jamal Murray, which might be most advantageous, given the fact that Jamal can have a lot of responsibility in a playoff setting. He needs someone to be able to protect him on that side of the court. But the backup power forward, Blacko Chanchar not being here has made a really big deal and the overall size that Denver Nuggets have in dealing with some of those difficult matchups. Remember, Blanco last year had some really good defensive standout matchup versus SGA and some other players. He's a very good athlete. Remember, he had that dunk from the free throw line. He yeah. shot the three ball pretty well. And I think he just offers a lot for this team. And without him, they have really just lacked that six foot eight, 230, 225 pound backup power forward to slot next to Peyton and then whoever they are playing at the center position. So, that would probably be the two things that I'd be looking at. Backup center, you want it for regular season wins. Uh, there are some players they could target in there as well, but I think you're looking for someone that you could slot into the roster rotation for the rest of the season. So I think it's going to be backup point guard, backup power forward. Yeah, and like unfortunately for Denver, the the market for those guys is not like it's not especially good for the contracts that they're able to give up. And like why I say that is because the untouchables in Denver, the players that they're not really going to trade is basically it begins with the starting five. Like Denver wouldn't trade anybody in their starting five right now. That's Jamal Murray, KCP, Michael Porter, Aaron Gordon, Nikola Jokic. Those are guys that they are not going to move. And you start getting into the problem where Denver just doesn't have a ton of tradable contracts right now. Reggie Jackson is currently their sixth man, but the, he makes $5 million. Zeke Naji is only a tradable salary for about $4.3 million. And he has a poison pill attached to his contract. So there's not a lot of deals that Denver can do for players kind of in that 10 to $20 million range, which is the most frequent kind of traded contract around the trade deadline right now. So it's going to be tough for them to figure out exactly who they can deal for. Uh, not to mention, they don't have any first round picks to trade. They can only trade about five second round picks or so. And, and they've got some first round swaps that they could throw in there, but there's just not a lot of stuff that they can do. So it really just comes down to how serious do you think these needs are at, at backup point guard, power forward, and center? Yeah, I don't want to mitigate the seriousness just because we saw that it mattered last year. Jeff Green, uh, for as limited as he was at times, he had a really important job with his roster, helping defensively Aaron Gordon in that small ball five lineup, having another athlete next to Nikola Jokic on the cut or somebody in the corner that you could trust at times as a three-point shooter or especially as a slasher. And then backup point guard, Bruce Brown, they don't go 16-4 and four through the playoff without him. Now, they still win the championship, but maybe it's a little bit more difficult. Do they secure some of those victories? One of them versus the Suns, for instance. One of them versus the Lakers. Definitely the last one versus the Miami Heat. So I think a lot of this is you don't want to say that those positions are unimportant because they are. But I will say the Nuggets can still win a title and, you know, not say easily, but pretty handily, possibly, if they're all locked in step with one another. But I do still think, though, what is the easiest pathway for the Nuggets? They have enough offense. They're going to have enough offense. Can they find another defender to put in the rotation that will help Jokic, Murray, and Porter to carry the load offensively as the lead offensive options? And then obviously AG, KCP, Peyton, Christian, that's seven. And then you got Reggie. That's eight. But I don't know if that is going to be the final eight if they're able to find another point guard or power forward that can help them to make a championship run for the second straight year. It's fascinating. I'm, I'm going to take a different tact here because I think that Denver's offense is slightly more, more vulnerable this year than it was last year where they're, they're – lineups were great last year for the most part offensively and there's definitely a little bit of weakness guys aren't shooting necessarily as pristinely as they were last year and like I, I think a lot of teams have started to catch up to Denver and their their style and the, the way that they play so it wouldn't surprise me if 
they might go for a more of an offensive option, somebody who could be a a floor spacer in, in a way to make things easier for Jamal Murray and Nicole Jokic and Michael Porter to score, uh, especially because some of the teams at the top that I don't think Denver expected teams like the Minnesota Timberwolves, OKC Thunder, and Los Angeles Clippers to be making up the rest of the top four in the West. If Denver's going to get through those teams, those are some really great defensive teams, namely Minnesota and OKC. Uh, Denver's going to have to find ways to score on them just as much as they are to stop them. So I'm curious to see how it goes. Yeah, you know what's funny, though, and I've said this for about a year now, uh, with this new NBA, I don't think beating Denver with defense is the way to go. And I, matter of fact, I'm willing to go so far, you're not beating Denver with an elite defense because Denver is going to have an elite defense. The issue is, is they're going to be able to get into almost any action they want, but do you have, on the other end, enough players that are going to be good enough pull-up shooters, good enough rim pressure guys? Can you really make Jokic feel like he can't do anything with you in space? Can you make KCP, Aaron Gordon, Peyton Watson, Christian Brown, can you make them work enough where they cannot stay in front of you or contain you as a player? When they lost to the Suns, they lost because the Suns were housers from the three-point line. When they lost to the Heat, the Heat shot 49% from three. When they lost to the Minnesota Timberwolves, now, some of this was, Jokic makes a free throw, that game is over in four, and they go home <laughs> with a sweep. But yeah. that's what happened. Anthony Edwards had the best offensive game, maybe outside of game two in that series as well. So some of this is, you might be able to get Denver once with defense, but you're going to need to score at a high level. And that's why I think the best teams that are going to be facing Denver in a playoff setting might not be at the top, per se, which are Minnesota's. Uh, but might end up being some of the teams like the Clippers that are just a high octane offense that can get a lot of shots in from really efficient areas on the court. So we'll find out. Yeah, to be clear, OKC Clippers, they are still great offenses as well. Just they're doing things well on both ends of the floor, which that's what great championship caliber teams do. So Denver, they're, they're going to have their work cut out for them this year. So it wouldn't surprise me if if a guy like Calvin Booth says, you know what? Let's try to add somebody. Let's try to shake, not not necessarily shake up the rotation, but bolster the rotation in a way where you don't know necessarily what's going to happen, but might not be the worst idea in the world to add somebody new to that dynamic. So I'm going to throw around uh, three different ideas at you, and, and we're, we can go back and forth on these if you'd like, but I'm going to throw three different ideas based off of some reporting that we've heard, based off of some different ideas, and I want you to tell me if you like them or not as a nugget. Uh, kind of correspondent here. Uh, Reggie Jackson, Vlaco Chanchar, and two second round picks to the Washington Wizards for DeLon Wright. Uh, how does that sound if you're a Nuggets fan? And, and Reggie Jackson, Vlaco, uh, and you said two second round picks. Just a, it's basically yeah. them like taking on expiring is, salary and then is, a couple seconds. Is DeLon Wright worth more than Reggie Jackson right now? It's a good question. I think it's more about fits and and for a team like Denver, like you said, he may be able to reprise that defensive role that Bruce Brown played a little bit better than somebody like Reggie. Yeah, it's funny. I think Washington would actually have to give something back in that deal. I don't know player for player if he is more better, and he's definitely not performing better than Reggie Jackson this year. So this would just be they're swapping out to get something that they need, meaning they want more playmaking because uh, obviously, you know, Poole's not doing the job. They need more run Kuzma and uh, uh, CRISPR and Danny and all that stuff. But I think for Denver, Denver's like, look, you know, we really don't need another pull-up shooter at this position. Now, DeLon Wright could score a little bit, but we really need you for your defense. So it's a little tough, man. So I think that they could make the trade if they got something else back in that deal. Um, I just don't think DeLon Wright is just like a, a better player than Reggie. So some of this would just be about fit. I do think Washington would have to send something back in that trade. Second idea here. With the Memphis Grizzlies, Denver sends Christian Brown and Hunter Tyson and gets back Xavier Tillman and David Roddy. How would you feel about that move? I would not love that. I would not love that. I think backup center is not as important as a elite level defensive wing and athlete. So I think the issue is, is that if we're giving up a wing and we're getting a big, David Roddy is not playing. David Roddy's not going to be in the playoff rotation for the Denver Nuggets, more than likely. Mm. He just remember uh, Michael, Michael Malone, I believe last year said that specialists don't play in the playoffs. Like, you know, Roddy is just the definition of a specialist. He just doesn't do enough. So I would not love that trade either just because so now you get out of Christian Brown, you got a backup big, but is that backup big getting closing minutes? Christian will at times. So then you kind of lost value to re-up value for non-Jokic minutes. So I think prioritizing the Jokic minutes is the most important thing you can do. 
and Christian, it uplifts what they're trying to do in their best skill set more than he would. One of the ideas of this deal would be Xavier Tillman could be a long-term solution for them as a backup five. And and David Roddy would also provide a little bit more size and physicality kind of in that Jeff Green role that that you mentioned previously. So it's interesting to think about. I think I agree, though, that I'd rather keep Christian around because I think the the recent stretch that he had, like he he looks like he's bouncing back in a big way. So that's what you want to see from Christian heading into a playoff run. So I think he's probably not on the table for that reason. Um, Final trade for you, though. Denver calls up Detroit and they ask – uh, what about Zeke Naji, Vlako Chanchar for Danilo Gallinari straight up? Like you say, hey, we're going to get out of the Zeke Naji deal yeah. and we're going to get back a guy who maybe could play in the playoffs, maybe not, but you're not giving up anybody who would have played in the playoffs. Yeah, I mean, you get rid of your most tradable contract as of right now. So that would be interesting. Now, if Danilo for sure can come back and play in the playoffs, I think that would be valuable. Uh, the Denver Nuggets have enough wings to fortify. Uh, he's not going to be good defensively, but could be a really good shooter. Could be a nice floor spacer. Again, kind of your Kevin Love mold where you don't have a lot of defensive value at all, and you're not even as big as Kevin. So, you know, some of that is it's a risk. Like, you know, do you truly believe that you're going to have Danilo on the court at times closing. Maybe you do. You know, maybe he takes Aaron Gordon's spot, and it's like, all right, Porter, KCP, Danilo Gallinari, who are you leaving open in this situation? So it could end up working out. I would be okay with it. Um, but at the same time, um, I just – you don't know if you want to give up that contract and that deal. But, you know, they did it, then obviously they see or a potential future a deal of being – or did not Danilo being able to close on this lineup and provide some spacing value for the Nuggets. Yeah, and like one of the the ideas with it there is you've got Aaron Gordon as your five. We talked about mm-hmm. feel like that four spot. Like Gallo, Gallo could definitely like he could guard the four or the five in those situations, mm-hmm. and it just kind of depends on the on the matchup physically. But he would provide better spacing than just about anybody kind of at the the forward spots that Denver could throw out there, rather than play Michael Porter for forty two minutes or something like that. So. I uh, I think that there is a, a merit to it, at least, to explore something like that. But maybe Denver could find something better on the buyout market, uh, which is something that we'd also have to talk about, too. But, yeah, uh, yeah no, it should be should be fascinating this year, man. Uh, is there a trade that you want to throw out there that, that like a guy that you think Denver should be targeting? Yeah, look, man, I don't know what the Nets are going to what they're doing right now. They seem to be having some crazy expectation for their return. But Dennis Smith Jr. just feels like a natural fit. Um, he is a good to really good defender. He's a very good athlete, offensive leader, some upside there. You know, you're not going to ask him to be a like crazy shooter or anything like that, but I think it's cheap. You don't need to give a lot. And then on top of that, man, this is a player that could work around Jamal Murray. And then especially thinking as a slasher and cutter, he would be dynamic going towards the rim with Jokic taking the big out of the paint. So that's somebody that I'd be looking at. DeLon Wright is also somebody else. I'd be looking at, as much as I love Monte Morris, again, I just think it goes back to that thing. You know, you need a defender in that role. Um, but I think Dennis Smith Jr., DeLon Wright, uh, they were on sharp. If you could somehow get a deal for both of them, that's what I'll be looking for. It's interesting. that I think that Brooklyn is a team that is ripe for trades, and, like, they could go a bunch of different directions with their team, and they've got a lot of guys that I think in the right situation you could see working. So I'm curious to see how it goes, but – uh, yeah, maybe it's Dennis Smith. Maybe it's uh, De'Aaron Sharp. Maybe it's even somebody like a Royce O'Neal or, or going yep. going even more aggressive like a Dorian Finney-Smith. That would be very, very fascinating. Um, last question I have for you. Is there a, a name that you know that's out there right now on the trade market, a big name that uh, maybe Denver's not going to get, but this player could potentially shift the playoff race for you? Uh, I mean, LeBron, James. <laughs> I mean, that's the top of the list. But not feelers, man. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's the top of the list. You know, if he goes to New York, uh, that changes everything for the future for the L.A. Lakers and for the Western Conference. And then that changes up the opponents uh, coming out of the uh, Eastern Conference because James with Jalen Brunson and O.J. Anobi and all that, that would be a very formidable uh, roster. Um, he's obviously at the top of the list. Jimmy Butler, I don't know. It's not true at all because I just don't see Miami being like, we're going to get rid of the reason why we've gone to two finals in the last four years, but they can yeah. do it again for a third year in five years. Yeah, I'm not doing that. Um, that Those would be the two biggest names on the market. Pascal already got moved. Andrew Wiggins could possibly be on the move to someone. 
uh, for another young star-ish player. And so Wiggins is another one of those dudes that had to got the experience and he has he's, he's got it but like he's also just so far away from where he was just even yeah. a couple couple of years ago so i'm i'm curious to see like if any team wants to take a chance on that and try to rehab his value but uh golden state they're 12th in the west right now like they they they've got to get aggressive on on stuff like this too so yeah who do you think might be the swing factor into a big star or on the market for you? yeah i mean jimmy's the one that like it, it's like the secret one that People aren't necessarily sure what's going to happen there. Uh, outside of that, man, DeJounte Murray's probably not good enough to really move the needle for a team. And I just I just don't see, like, especially for Denver, like if if hypothetically DeJounte Murray gets moved, or let's say, let's say it's Miles Bridges who gets moved to Phoenix, like, does that change your opinion of the Phoenix Suns in any way, shape, or form? Not really to me. Like they they get yeah, another I'm guy that you yeah, like they get another guy that's very tough to to guard, and that's it. So, I I find it very difficult to see. Like, is is there a guy that the Clippers or the Wolves or the Thunder could get? I mean, I guess the Thunder could get super aggressive in secret, yeah. but like, yeah, Mikael, there's a, there's a few players that can go after. Sure, but like, I just I just don't think that they're going to, you know. So, mm-hmm. and if that's the case, then like those are the teams I think are challenging, and I don't think that there's anything that they could do specifically that firmly changes their future against the Nuggets. Right. Yeah, I mean, I don't know what move the Wolves could make with outside of trading Carl Anthony Towns and getting like a really, really, really solid return in for Cat, um, who, you know, is going to an all-star game. So, yeah, I mean, I don't know. I'm not saying, st- you know, the, the teams are going to stand pat, but a lot of this stuff I think is going to change a lot of team destinations is tertiary. I mean, Boston, uh, they could easily upgrade their seventh man in their rotation. They don't want Peyton Pritchard. Uh, you know, they don't want Sam Hauser. They don't want Luke Cornett. They want a real seventh option on that roster outside of Derek White, Drew Holiday, Jalen Brown, Jason Tatum, and Christoph Porzingis. That could be a spot. Um, the Mavs, they have Grant Williams, and maybe if they can upgrade from that disaster signing, he's a good player. Yeah. But, yeah, you know what I mean? Like, maybe they can find a wing. That's yeah, it's just like, is, is Kyle Kuzma changing your opinion of the of the Mavericks to you? To you? No. Yeah, they would be tougher for sure. But I don't yeah, know they'd be winning. tougher. But, like, I mean, yeah, you're just going to have to – you're going to have to guard and – they're, that's not going to change your your opinion on how easy it is to score on them, in my opinion. So, like, it's tough. Like, the West is is crazy, man. There's there's so many teams. Like, if if hypothetically, let's say OKC was to trade for uh, Andre Drummond, like, does that change your opinion of them? If the uh, no, I mean, those, still, those backup bins would be key, but no, not again. Still not not long term, or at least for a championship odds, no. Um, but OKC, okay, they could be good enough to get to the conference finals right now themselves. So without anything, so you know, I think the thing with OKC, okay, man, we just don't even know what the matchup looks like because Denver's only been fully healthy and like had you know a day of a regular basketball day once versus that team um, outside of a back to back and KCP not being there or like whatever. Um, and then Jokic obviously missing the last one, and they've all been close games except for two of them when Nuggets won by thirty three, and then. I think they lost by 21, I believe. So, yeah, we'll see. Yeah, I mean, they're a tough team. Uh, Clippers will be a tough team. T-Wolves will be a tough team. I think that they'll all be tough, and Denver's got their work cut out for them, but not sure the trade deadline's going to change much for any of these teams. Maybe the buyer market changes something, but if only in a very, very minor way. But How do you feel like Thaddeus Young will be on the on dinner at the back of four? Oh, he would be helpful. Like he's he's one of those guys that knows what he's doing. He could run some pick and roll. Like that's that's a good replication of Jeff Green, I think. That's that would be interesting. Yeah, that's kind of where I've been sitting at. Like, what would be the bargain bin player you could add? It'd probably be Thaddeus. Yeah. I hope, hopefully he gets bought out because I don't I don't think they'd want to trade for him, but that would be an interesting buyout mm-hmm. guy. All right, folks. Well, hey, let us know down in the comments below who you think Denver should trade for, what you think they should do, and if there's a team that you'd be scared about. Uh, acquiring a certain player at the trade deadline. We'll be fascinated to see the comments. Thank you so much, everybody. He's Swiper. I'm Ryan. We're out.